Hi guys, Alberto here. You're watching the Bedroom Rocker YouTube channel and today we are checking out this amazing Tajima Classic Series T635 Strat type guitar. I'm gonna open by playing the guitar over a blues backing track using all pickup positions. Then we're gonna talk a little bit about the brand and about this model specifically and cover the main specs. Uh, then I'm gonna show you some more sound clips including clean sounds and also more distorted sounds. And finally we move on to the review part. So grab a drink, sit tight and let's go. <laughs> For those of you who are not familiar with the brand, Tajima is actually one of the biggest guitar brands in Brazil. It all started in the 80s with Seizi Tajima, a Japanese-Brazilian luthier, learning how to make guitars by himself and getting pretty good at it. And then in 1996, a big importer of musical instruments called Marutec bought the naming rights for Tajima and started manufacturing these guitars in Brazil under supervision of Mr. Tajima himself. So he's one of the most famous luthiers in Brazil and rumors is that he's also a samurai in his free time. A couple of years after he retired from Tajima, the world-class luthier Marcio Zaganin took over for the product development and quality control. And nowadays, most of the entry and mid-level models uh, like the T-type guitars, S-type guitars like this one here are made in hand-picked factories in China. And then the higher end models are made here in Brazil and they have a couple of really cool original designs. So I'll link their website in the description box down below. This video was made possible by Made in Brazil Music Mega Store. They landed me the Tajima T635 for me to make this review video. They have 30 years of tradition and six mega stores throughout the country. And they are my main go-to shop when I'm buying gear here in Brazil. So a massive thank you and I'll link them in the description box below. This is also a bit of a special video to me because about 15 years ago, I went to one of Made in Brazil's mega stores in Sao Paulo and my parents got me this Tajima T635 guitar. So this is still from the time they were handmade in Brazil. So it features the signature from Mr. Tajima. It also has this cool, large Fender 70s style headstock. And they later had to change that because of a lawsuit. I modded this guitar, I threw it in some Seymour Duncan pickups and it was my main guitar throughout high school, I didn't have much to do, so I was playing it to death. And up until today, whenever I pick it up, the next two feels very familiar and is really a joy to play. 
Now let's take a look at this Tajima T635 guitar. This is part of their classic series. It is made in China, but it is not their cheapest nor their most entry-level instrument. It sits one level above and it has some really cool upgrades that I think it make it stack very well against uh, top-level squires like the Classic Vibe series and even against entry-level uh, Mexican Fenders like the Player series. So I think in the US this is a three to four hundred dollars guitar. I couldn't find many distributors. I think they're still growing their distribution network in the US. If you know any distributor, make sure to leave a comment down below. And here in Brazil, they cost between 1,800 to 2,000 reais. Uh, so they are super competitive considering that a Squire Classic Vibe uh, costs almost four times uh, that value. And of course, this is a lot related to the currency exchange, which at the moment is really bad in Brazil, but in, I don't feel this guitar is inferior to Esquire in any way. I think maybe the most inferior thing is that it doesn't have the by Fender uh, written in the headstock. The construction is pretty traditional for an S-type guitar, so we have an outer body uh, with a maple neck and a maple fretboard. I really like the wood grain on the maple neck and also the fact that they have used a slightly dark tint on the neck to give it a bit more of a vintage vibe. The headstock is quite classy and neutral looking, which I highly appreciate. And then we have vintage tuners, no branded, but worked quite well. The scale length is the traditional 25 and a half inches. We then have a 43 millimeters wide bone nut. The fretboard radius is nine and a half inch and loaded with medium frets. The neck has a C shape, uh, which reminded me a lot of a 60s shape. So it's a bit more substantial, a bit thicker uh, than most current modern C shaped necks. The pickups are developed in-house and they are three vintage voiced Aunico magnet single coil pickups. The wiring is also fairly traditional, so you have a master volume, the neck pickup tone, the middle pickup tone and a five-way position switch. The bridge has a tremolo system, it came out of the factory floating and it pivots on two points and it came with a pop-in whammy bar. Let's hear some more sound samples now. I'm playing the Tajima straight into the Zoom GC3 audio interface for guitar and then using the Guitar Lab to emulate different circuits. For the introduction, I have used a very classic blue setup, so with a tube screamer in front of a Fender Twin Reverb. Now I'm gonna show you the Twin Reverb by itself for some clean sounds and then some dirty sounds with the model of a Marshall 1959 Super Lead Plexi.
also let me know what you think about the sounds and the looks of this Tajima Classic Series T635 guitar. I think this is an awesome instrument. They went with a very clear proposal of making a classy looking and vintage uh, sounding and vintage flavored uh, instrument and they nailed it. So they followed a very clear recipe, didn't try to invent anything and just really well executed and at a very reasonable price point. So I think this is a very good looking guitar, it's uh, super well finished, they really nailed the color which is not always the case uh, with cheaper guitars, this is a Fiesta Red but they also have some other very cool looking uh, vintage colors and in terms of sound I think they also did a pretty good job uh, putting Aunico pickups there because they really deliver uh, this classic single coil, um, vintage single coil tones that you would expect uh, with lots of clarity and articulation. Now at this price point I think this is a great guitar for beginners if you can afford to spend a bit more and also for intermediate or semi-professional players and even for gigging musicians if you want a backup guitar or a guitar that you can take for your gigs and not be too worried if something happens to it and ultimately it's also great as a mod platform because the base materials, the woods and the base construction are so good uh, that is worth investing and with time spending in some high quality tuners and, and pickups and customizing it and make it your own instrument without spending a shitload of money. One thing to notice is that this guitar has a decently sized C-shaped neck and a wide nut at 43mm, so it tends to favor bigger hands. It's nothing crazy, just something to be aware of, and if you can try the guitar before buying it, that's always the best idea. Now a few things that I would change as a matter of personal preference. The first one would be the fret sizes. So this guitar has medium frets on a 9.5 inch fretboard radius and I didn't have any issues with fret buzzing whatsoever but it's also not the easiest guitar to bend around. And it's a guitar that sounds very good for blues playing where people tend to bend a lot. So I would definitely like to see some bigger frets there to facilitate bending. Second would be the bridge pickup. But this is a problem with strats in general, I'm not a big believer of strat bridge pickups and I would definitely like to see something with a little bit more woomph, a little bit more in the mid-range and a, a little bit less uh, in the top end. And finally, uh, the wiring. So I'm also not a big fan of the strat wiring. I think all the pickups should be wired to the tone control, especially the bridge pickup so that you could tame a little bit of the top end if it gets too shrill. And then you can use the second tone knob to blend the neck pickup in all the positions. So that's a wiring that Fender has been using in some of their newer models. And I think other companies should follow as well because the traditional Strat wiring scheme is not my favorite. So that's it for today. I hope the review was helpful and fun to watch. If that's the case, make sure to give it a like. And if you want to see more guitar and gear related videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay tuned. Finally, if you like what I'm doing here and you want to support the channel, also make sure to check my affiliate links in the description box down below. If you use them to buy anything, I earn a small commission and this really helps me to get more products for making reviews like this one at no additional cost for you. Thanks for watching, keep on rocking and cheers!